And we are rolling. Say hello to... Uh, hello, folks. Hello, Good folks. Morning. Hello, All right. everybody. I hope somebody's out there. Please, I hope somebody loves me. Yes, they will. They'll come on in a few minutes when right. they or a few yeah, seconds. Come on down. Come on come down. Come on down. So it's amazing how these Tuesdays seem to rattle around. It's a sign of growing old, I believe. They come more quickly. It's like reaching the end of the toilet paper. You know, oh God, we're onto bowels already, are we? Mm -hmm. um, my little mousy things. No, just working. use that down no, arrow. It's not working. It, well, it should. Try oh, again. No. Try again. Yes. Hello, 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 David Hauser. How are you? Hello, David. No, not working. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Oh, I'll, I'll oh, use the little fun. mousey thing, not to worry. Okay. I just need to be reminded of what I'm going to talk about. All you right, know. there you are. You know, when you get to be yeah. an old fart like me. See, if you click in here, yeah. you go down. So oh, it does work. Oh, it does. Yes, yeah, I just yeah. mustn't have pressed it hard. I don't think you. Yeah. We'll do that again. Okay. Okay, I'll do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Go right, on. okay. Oh, that one, so, not the other one. Jimmy Coburn's watching. <laughs> oh, really? Hello, darling. All How right, Liverpool in the house. Yes, Jimmy yeah. good all the way from Liverpool. And Oban, Scotland. Oh, my goodness, you're a true loyal fan, aren't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Jolly good. So you actually have electricity in Scotland now, do you? <gasps> oh, 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 rotten. Do it. Rotten to the uh, core. No, no scotch for you. Be serious for a moment. I know the whole world was watching... John McCain's ceremonies last week and what incredible tributes to such a beautiful man. Yeah. I mean, he was above party politics. He was about America. That's right. And there was just some terrific tributes. And I think it made a lot of people think twice and come together more. And then, you, you know, the next day there was Aretha Franklin and that outpouring of love. And one of the lovely stories I heard about her was that she, uh, she would read the Detroit papers and when she found out that people had died who were you know, not very well off. She'd get onto the funeral parlour and say, uh, deal with it and stick it on my bill, mm -hmm. but don't tell anybody. And nobody knew this for years and years and years till just after she died and somebody spilled the beans. Then a lot of other people came forward and said, yes, it happened to me. I mean, what a lovely lady to be so busy with her career and everything that she thought about Peter. doing this for other people. And it's so loving and so, oh, wonderful. There'll never be another Re Aretha Bullock. That's right. No wonder they called her the Queen. Bless yeah. her. God rest her soul. And Jim. Oh, by the way, Jim <laughs> McCain, his mother, who was 100 and 106, is she really? Yes, she is. Yeah. She was at all of those events, bless her. And uh, she evidently, when she was in her 90s, he had begged her to stop driving because of all the speeding tickets she was getting. That's wow. my girl. Now, and she went she to did... Germany one time. Right. Tried to rent a car, and they said, no, you're too old. So she went out and bought one. Yeah, as you do. <laughs> so you can see where he got that spirit from. And, oh, bless him. And she was just wonderful to the end. But, you know, let's sort of move on. Uh, Ruth keeps telling me that I can look at my notes. But yes. Yes, I'm not can. hitting it hard enough. I'm hitting it harder now. Yes. Is it working? Yes, it is. Yes. See, learn something new every day, Mother. Oh, no, yeah. That's right. But uh, we're evidently going to be on British television tomorrow on ITV, yeah. on the uh, uh, This Morning show, because uh, last week or week before, the Speakmans came over here to film some segments, and they did one of, of Ruth and I, and me overcoming my fear of water and swimming pools and all that. So that'll be on telly in England tomorrow. So... <laughs> And Ruth and Martin are conferring about something weird going I'm on. I'm just saying, Butch has cat. managed to get his cameo. We have oh, a grey cat. We have a cat, Butch, which all, most of you know. He always manages to get into the camera somehow. So this Where week, he's, he? he's, in a, he's on one of the garden chairs, and you can just see his head sticking up. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably waiting to go into hair and makeup. Is that a union cat? Oh, probably, yeah. But uh, that's where Gavin Scott is at the moment. Gavin is my guest today. He's probably in hair and makeup. Oh, I'm being sure. all primped up for his on-camera thing. I've got some of his incredible books here. He's got so many stories. When I googled his, his bio, I reckon he must be at least 140 years old with all the things he's done. He's directed, he's produced, he's written screenplays. He's, act, he's actually been the butler to Simon Rushdie. Salmon. Salmon. Oh, Simon. Simon Rushdie. <laughs> <laughs> is that his brother? Do you know his brother Simon? Simon. Simon. <laughs> Can you get his autograph? Can you get his autograph? You get me to shred. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got I'm this, being rather silly now. This one is wet. This yeah. one is wet. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, I think actually, yes, he's worked with Eddie Izzard too, another of my heroes. Absolutely. So, uh, I'll be asking him about that later. But um, by the way, we're not going to do tea flicks next Tuesday because it's 9 11, and I don't think it's a day for being flippant or frivolous. It's a day for reflection. I'm sure you'll all agree. And the week after, we have another Canadian musician, a very famous young man in a great band. I'll tell you all about that nearer the time. But. Um, but, hello, Cousin Tim Kendall. Hello, Cousin Tim Kendall. Haven't you got anything better to do than come checking on me all the time, every week? I, I suppose you're in some establishment that serves alcohol. Wish uh, I was. Don't know. Well, actually, uh, you left your cocktail behind. I did. I left my cocktail in oh, San Francisco. On a foreign table. There you Thank are. You I much. shall make tea since Gavin's yes. coming out shortly. We will have tea when Gavin comes on screen. But... Um, Yes, he's a fellow Brit, Gavin. He's done, I mean, lots of you know all about him. He's written a million books, I've got three of them here. And he's got another one coming out soon, which he'll tell us about today. And he's spent many years as a filmmaker and he's worked with George Lucas when he first came here. And you name it, he's done it. So I think we'll have a cup of tea. So Gavin, are you ready? Are you a hair and makeup ready? Indeed. Please, come, come on, on down. down. Hi there. Hello. Round of applause for Oh, and a sweater too. People are going to think it's cold in California. This uh, this jersey was bought. Oh, it's a jersey. It's, it's a, a jumper. Jersey. It's a jumper in Hull. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, well, it used to be, you see, we emigrated from Hull to New Zealand. I know. And yeah. my wife's family came from a little rural town called Hunterville. Oh. And we were visiting it. We were actually visiting the War Memorial there because mm. in New Zealand, it's amazing. You go into a little village with 200 people in it mm. and the War Memorial will have 60 or 70 graves from World War I. Good because man. New Zealand has sent yeah. men in their yes. thousands. Yeah. Anyway, there was a little shop to raise money for the veterans, or the, you know, the, or the veterans or the upkeep of the memorial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were selling this jersey. Oh, and really? because my mother-in-law grew up as a child mm. on a farm near Hunterville, oh. we thought we had to buy it. Absolutely. And it's perfect for the strong. cold Los Angeles yeah. weather. Cold Los Angeles, they're <laughs> well, not going to believe we've that. Got the, yeah. Generally, it's, I don't have an excuse. Live, yes, it's yes, overcast yes. today. That's so right, yeah. 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 A little chilly, shall we say. <laughs> but... Uh, Right back down to 68 degrees. Oh, right? no. Yeah, right. there you are. So, listen, uh, tell us about your new book that's going to be published next week. What's right. that well, all I'm about? I'm very proud of this. This yeah. is uh, this is called The Age of Exodus. Am I holding up to the right camera? That's right. The Age of Exodus. Now, what I should explain, I just put it in context. It's the sequel yes. to The Age of Olympus, yes. <laughs> which is the sequel to The Age of Treachery. So, so far, it's a trilogy. Yes. And they all star the same chap who's a... Uh, He'd been a member of the Special Operations Executive mm -hmm. during the war. His name is Duncan Forrester. He comes from Hull, surprisingly. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's about the same yeah. age as, uh, as my dad would have been. It's oh. set in 1947. Uh -huh. So Duncan Forrester has been in a very exciting war, Special Operations Executive, underground operations all over Europe. Very exciting war. Yeah. But he comes back, as so many, most servicemen did, sick of it. Yes wanting a little bit of peace, yeah. wanting to go back to the world of academia yes. and studying the ancient world, which is his love. Yes, I see. In the first book, he's thrown off course because a friend of his, another academic, is accused of murder. Um, and in order to save his friend from the gallows, he has to find out what really happened. Yeah. And that leads him into kind of the beginning of the Cold War. I see. Now, you see, each of these books, they're be very firmly based in the history of the time. Yeah. So they kind of each tell a story of a different event that was happening in the late 40s, because yeah. that's when our world was being created. Oh yes, you know? I know. Yeah. Uh, I was there. I bring in real characters as well, mm -hmm. as you, uh, who, before they were famous. Yes. So for example, he, oh thanks so much, he talks to a student uh, for some evidence at uh, uh, Oxford, an uh, x-ray crystallographer student, a woman called Margaret Roberts, mm -hmm. and she gives some evidence and he adds that sort of thing. Only later do we realise that she married a chap called Dennis Thatcher. And became no. Margaret Maggie Thatcher. Oh, <laughs> so Maggie. She, I've got the young Maggie Thatcher oh. in the first book. I've got Incredible. Ian Fleming yeah. before he invented James Bond, when he was uh, he, well, he was a journalist, yes. you know, yeah. and uh, all sorts of people. J.R. Tolkien before he'd finished Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So I like to bring in the real people Isn't of the time to create the feeling yeah. of the yes. time. Yes. Uh, yeah. Age of Olympus is set in Greece and brings in people like Patrick Lee Fermer and oh, yes. Lawrence Durrell. And then the Age of Exodus, this new one, this is about the creation of Israel, which was oh. what was happening in 1947. Yes. And the 
Britain had said, we've had enough of being in Palestine, we're going to get out. Yes. The United Nations had to decide what would happen to Palestine next. Exactly. Would it become Arab? Would it become Jewish? Would it be split between the two? Yes. And there were a lot of shenanigans yep. lying on, oh, going yeah. behind the fact. And I thought, what a great area for my hero, Duncan Forrester, to become involved in finding out who is doing a series of murders yes. which relate to that. I see. So oh my goodness, on. what a mind Fantastic. you've got. <laughs> do you ever have time to sleep? I, well, do, do you dream sleep, is, sleep is, 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 I suffer from insomnia and my chief problem is waking up and my mind is racing. Yes. So what I do is I listen to books on tape. Uh -huh. Especially ones that I know yes. really well because I'm not anxious to know what's going. P.G. Woodhouse, yes. you know, yes. uh, well, J.R. Tolkien. Yeah. You know, yes. I love having that soothing voice. I see. So that helps with my insomnia. But wow. apart from that, as you implied, during the rest of the day, my mind is. I'm racing. sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever thought about um, actually narrating books, or have you narrated books yourself? Believe it or not, I have converted my wardrobe. <laughs> of course you have. Where all the um, where all the clothes act as a very good sound baffle. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you've evicted the lion and the witch. <laughs> very good. Yeah, <laughs> well, I haven't opened the door at the far end. Ah, you never can tell the lion. Don't. So, and I've learned how to. Uh, so I've, I've recorded the first two books and and the third one, and I'm waiting for Audible to approve it technically. You know, they I usually see. say we Fantastic. found a click here. Oh, wow. but I, I have to say it's a really good. If I would recommend any author to try recording their own works. This is a really yes. good way of saying, oh, I got that a bit wrong, or that doesn't yes. sound as smooth as it that's could. That's right. But when you're reading it, you, mm. can, you, you know. That's right. So, yeah. Wonderful. When you <laughs> read job for you, Martin, on my next book. <laughs> when you read something out loud. <laughs> yes, mm. well, yeah, when you read something out loud, obviously you can, you can adapt and realise what, you know, what, how you could have done it better. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, and, and the other thing about reading it out loud, of course, you realise that you, you're giving the emphasis and giving the character to the characters, which is exactly what you want. You're yes, not handing right. it to an actor yeah. to hopefully yeah. get it. Yes, of course. So, yeah. I know there's so many aspects of it. Yeah. And I mean, the whole audio book business is massive now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. People need, especially people who are stuck on freeways and driving for hours. My, my daughter saves their sanity. production designer. She's yes. always going and yeah. buying things for sets and things like that. Yes. And uh, she listens all the time. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. I used to, when I worked in downtown LA, I used to listen to audio books. Now, uh, you've written a lot of scripts for yeah. film series and so on. Yes. How did that come about? Did well, it's interesting. I, um, I mentioned that my family emigrated to New Zealand yes. in the early 60s. Yes. And um, uh, it was interesting. So just as the Beatles were coming to Providence, uh -huh. <laughs> we were off to New Zealand. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was a big Might change a in my life. Actually. Actually. So, oh, it was. It yeah. was. I mean, I, I grew up in Hull. Yeah. It's a city for which I have much affection, but yeah. it's... Um, it's a tough industrial northern city. Um, and suddenly, because of this arrival in this rural area of New Zealand, mm -hmm. Hawke's Bay, yeah. uh, surrounded by orchards and fruit trees and... and uh, sheep. Sh there were sheep, absolutely, sheep. and beaches and yes. hills, and suddenly all the pressure was off. It was wonderful. Yes, it must have been great, yes. I love being there. Yeah. And um, I, so I was there for, you know, that I grew up, but it's still the call of home was there. So yes, I know. When, when, by the time I reached my 20s, I'd been to university and so on, I, um, and I was married now, and my wife was quite keen, although she's a sort of fourth generation New yeah. Zealander, yeah. she was quite keen to go to England, so we moved to England. And there uh, I joined the BBC, basically. That's uh, right, yeah. yes, I remember, uh, I think. World at 1 and PM. Oh, yeah. really? Yes, um, yes, it was great fun. Yeah. Um, and, I was, and I was a journalist for BBC Radio, yeah. BBC TV Newsnight and yes. I did documentaries for um, Man Alive. Oh and, really? Uh, did you know Michael things. Barrett? I knew, yes, yeah, I mean yeah. I didn't know him well but uh, mm, yes. We yes, I met Michael each other. Barrett some time ago yeah, in Malta. A real, yeah. a real hero. Yes, yes, I know. Absolutely. Michael Parkinson, yes. his old buddy. I wish I had yeah. met him, yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. he was great too. The two of them used to get round. Another Yorkshireman piano. like yourself. Yes, that's right. Yes, he used to get round the so. piano and sing. You can roll the silver dollar down upon the ground. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, as a Yorkshireman, I'd never do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a very bad use for silver dollar. Absolutely, yeah. The Yorkshireman's close to being well, a Scotsman. My, well, and my father was Scottish, so oh. I have a double reason not to <laughs> go <laughs> rolling in his silver cool, dollars anyway. Absolutely, yeah. yes, I know. Mm. So, so, uh, so to get back to yeah, answering yes. your question, so, so I was a journalist for basically 20 years. I really oh. enjoyed doing yes, it. Yes, yeah. Um, but then I started writing screen, teaching myself to write screenplays, yes. mm -hmm. which I did by getting a paperback of um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, oh, the script really? of that, 
uh, which William Golden wrote, and yes. it's published in a paperback. So I thought, yeah. oh, this is how you do it. I and see. I realized one of the things that I think puts a lot of people off screenwriting, it certainly did yeah. me, was if you like, you had to put, you know, the lens, the lens, what lens yes, you're using, right. the camera oh, angle. Point of view. I thought, I don't know any of that. Yeah, yes. And I read the script, but it's not of that. <laughs> you oh, just no. want to make yes. it entertaining. Yeah. So I wrote that. And that got me, that got me an agent. And then somebody, um, a chap called Pierre Spengler bought the rights to one of the scripts I'd written about Jules Verne. Oh. Uh, he produced the Superman films yes. and, uh, and got Richard Lester interested. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, that got me an agent, but I hadn't had anything made. And then I decided that, that he, I was now sort of in a, li not in a limbo, but caught between two things. I was a journalist on ITV at this yeah. point. And I was a part-time screenwriter, and I felt I'd never become a full-time screenwriter unless I actually left journalism. I see. Which is a bit scary because we Absolutely. had, we, we had, had, we have, but then there were three little kids yeah. and uh, and a mortgage and a full task. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and so I went to my agent and I said, you know, from now on, Linda, I've decided to leave my job, and I'll uh, and I'll be relying on you yeah. for my earnings. Yeah. <laughs> she looks a bit Oops. green. <laughs> and, uh, I hate it when they do that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, so I said, so what's, uh, what's going on? Is there anything? And she said, well, George Lucas is coming to London oh. in about 10 days and yeah. he's wants, he wants to hire some writers for a series he's doing, a television series, about the young Indiana Jones. Oh, really? Fantastic. I'd love that. Oh, yeah. send, him, send him a script. Send him the Jules Earn script. She said, no. They've said no scripts. Oh. They just want a resume. Well, I yeah. said a resume is not going to print. I haven't had anything produced. No. Yeah. Um, and she said, "Well, yeah, but that's the rules." Now, 24 hours before, when I had not resigned <laughs> from ITN, I yes. would have said, "Well, yeah. those are the rules." Now I had resigned. It was yeah. absolutely real. I said, "Linda, Good. send them a script." Yeah. And she said, "Well, that might mean they won't look at it at all." Yeah. So I said, "I'll take that chance." Ah. Oh, well. Anyway, she sent in this script I'd written about Jules Verne, and uh, about. Three days later, we got the call, George Lucas will see you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> so, the gamble okay, paid off. That was Absolutely. the first thing. Yeah. Then I had a meeting with, with George and his producer, a guy called Rick McCallum, and sort of made my pitch as to what I could. I had an idea about young Jules Verne being influenced by the young Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, and I'd right. worked out the dates so yeah. that, yes, they could have met. Uh -huh. And he was yeah. quite intrigued by yes. that. And then, anyway, as, as always, they said, we'll let you. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> so I then finished up my time at ITN, had my leaving party, mm. went off. In fact, we went off to a little cottage in the southwest of France. Mm. We were there for a few days, and then the phone rang, and this voice on the other end said, How soon can you get over to Skywalker Ranch? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, boy, oh, boy. And that was the beginning. So yeah. that's the answer to the question how I got into screenwriting. Fantastic. <laughs> That uh, must be, yeah. yeah. So are you still writing screenplays? Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've just, um, I've written the sequel to The Age of Exodus, which is called The Age of Orwell. Oh. And it's about George Orwell trying to finish 1984 yeah. while being hunted by a Russian hit squad. Now that sounds like <laughs> something a thriller writer would have made up. It's not. It's no. true. Is it really? He went, yeah, in today's climate, he not be surprised. Stalin was it. furious about yeah. Animal Farm oh. because he'd been yeah. mocked in Animal Farm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mocked. Sure. He'd had Trotsky killed yeah. when, because Trotsky was writing a book about him. He sent yeah. a murderer to Mexico with an ice pick to kill oh. Trotsky. When well, I hope somebody you know, <laughs> who is not listening to this today, yeah. I don't <laughs> think he will be. No. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, when... Orwell was a war correspondent in Paris. He met Ernest Hemingway oh. and asked him to borrow asked to borrow a gun off him <gasps> because he he believed there was this hit squad after him. That's why he moved to the island of Jura of yes. Scotland yeah. to write the book to be so they couldn't get at it. Oh. And of course, it virtually killed him because he had TB oh. and Jura was wet and cold. Yes. But I thought, what if I got Duncan Forrester involved in trying to keep yes. that Russian hit squad away Fabulous. from Orwell and make sure he did finish it? Yes. And and so that segues around to the My question God. of the scripts. Yeah. So I've written that as a book, and then I've written it as a five-part TV series. Because oh, yeah. I thought, you know, why it's, not? It's, it's, why it's, not? it's all make it's all in Britain, you know, yes. it's yes. in Scotland, and yes. you know, it's wonderful. So yeah. that's uh, now, what, what I personally love about your storytelling and your weaving is that, you know, it's it's hard enough to create a fictional character, yes. but then when you interweave them with real people from history, yes. everybody's. Uh, mind's eye and imagination goes to those people and the things that they right. know about those historical yep. characters. Ooh. And well, they start painting their own 
yeah. picture and getting more involved, they have more buy-in in the they, story. They do, they do. And here's the other thing, that, that truth is stranger than fiction. Yes, sure but is. once you get into the details yeah. of those mm -hmm. historic characters, there's all sorts of stuff, like, yes. like the thing about Orwell. I mean, that's mentioned in his biography. Yeah. It's not something I've just come up with, but it's never been emphasized. Right. And so this notion of... of yeah. Once you get into the details, of, I mean, Ernest Bevin is a character in the Age of oh, Exodus, really? yes. and his who who was a hero of my family because yes. of his actions on behalf of the yeah. Union and the working right. man and so on. The coal but miners. but yes. exactly, yeah. but what he did on behalf, what he did over the efforts of the Jews to get to Israel, yes. very different story. Yes, and absolutely. And uh, I think that's a very interesting. You know, yes. you can look at a historical figure. Mm -hmm from several points of yes, view. Sure. And, uh, now, you yeah. mentioned something about Winston Churchill when you were here at our party yeah. last week. What can you tell us about that and how um, you came to those conclusions? Uh, that, that Winston Churchill, well, Winston Churchill, I haven't brought him into the story as such yet, uh -huh. yeah. um, but he's obviously hovering in the background, Yes. you know, because this was the stage, the late 40s, mm -hmm. when he was out of, out of office, out of power. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, his influence was there I mean, in the age of Exodus, he was the one, he, he almost got a peace deal between the Jews and the Arabs during the war, and then terrorists killed the guy, he killed his mediator, a guy called Lord Moyne, who was his personal yeah. friend, and Churchill just said the hell with you and backed right yeah. off. Um, wow. but, uh, I know, so much of this is, is not known by the public. Though, yes, it? it's kind of personal, personal yeah. stuff. That's and, right. And it, yeah. Your emotions are influenced. Yes. But uh, no, Winston was a fascinating character. Uh -huh. and, he, and of course, I love the idea, because I'm moving steadily through the history of the time, yes. he will be coming back as Prime yeah. Minister, of course, yes. in 1951. Yes. Yes. So it'll be very interesting to yeah. see what comes up there. We have a question from the audience. From yes. ah. Donna Jones Durford. She yeah. wants to know, what intrigued you enough to write on the subjects? On these characters? Yeah. How do you pick? Absolutely. Well, I, yes. love, I love history is the first part of it. Yes, answer. obviously. I mean, I, I mm. loved, I mean, that was how I got young Indi involved in young Indiana Jones, because I, I think George wanted somebody who knew a bit about history. And yes. I've, I've been reading history since, since I were a lad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what I find is that once you get, so I picked this period. I mean, there are so many books about World War II. Yes. Right. But not many books about were after World War Two had finished, right? And yet that was a period when everything was yes. happening, when the, you know, the Cold War yeah. was starting, the superpower thing, the bomb, and everything. So I thought this is a good area, and also you can have a if you've got somebody who has had an exciting war, you can draw on the war to the extent that you want to. Yes. So that interested me. But then once I got into it and I started reading diaries and memoirs and original documents, and then you things start to fit together. Yes. Oh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Incredible. American yeah. people, British people, Germans who had their own stories and suddenly they all kind of come together. Yeah. I love doing that. Absolutely, so, yes. Yeah. I, I hope that answers our yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. so. So now when is this next book going to be available? It's going to be available uh, after September 10th. Okay. So Where course, and um, how? Do well, tell our folks. Absolutely. Here. You can get it from, from Amazon. I'm glad to say probably... Amazon and probably all other good giant internet beer yes. boss. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. There's a little launch yeah. at um, Book Soup on uh, Sunset Boulevard oh, yes. on September 19th at okay. 7 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, it's starting to fill up now, but I yes. do mention it just in case. Okay. Uh, good. I'm actually going to be, and then they've asked me to do it at Chaucer's Books in Santa Barbara. Oh, lovely. And I may be going to several other places mm. I'm setting them up right yes. now. Okay. So, uh, but Amazon is the, is the place. So yes. You can get it as the paperback, Kindle, and soon be audible but you can start wonderful. with it you can already get the yes. audible for the previous two lovely that's wonderful <laughs> that's fantastic yeah. tell uh, i teased you when i did the promo i teased you as um salman rushdie's erstwhile <laughs> butler oh, yes. oh yeah let's go to the film part <laughs> let's, go, let's go to gavin the actor <laughs> that How will did that come about well Sheer, sheer egotism <laughs> good boy <laughs> no I, I mean, it's partly it gets you out of the house you know, I mean, if you're a writer, yes. you know, yeah. well, exactly. You're you came all the way here and, today. Absolutely, yeah. it's lovely to, to get out and to be on a set. And you know, I have oh, directed I as well. Yes. I love being on a yes. set. And um, and so, and what, what happened was sometimes I've been making a film like with Terry Jones, yes. who was, became a friend through Indiana Jones. Oh, he really? directed yeah. one of my episodes of Young Indiana Jones. We oh. became friends. We wrote together. Yeah. And then a couple of years ago, we were making a film together that we'd written jointly called Absolutely Anything. Oh, I know. It's Simon on Netflix. Page. It's great. I'm quite proud of it. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Oh, yes. Eddie Izzard. Yeah, and a lovely. Yeah, yeah, lovely. 
yeah. Sanjeev and, Bhaktar. Yeah, and you yeah. have the voice of Robin Williams, I think. And we you? do. I worked with and Robin to get that voice did down. Did you really? Yes, yes. Oh, I was on what a lovely people. man he was. Oh, yeah. he totally was. Yes. Um, but I'm, the, I'm, in, I'm in it as well as a newsreader. Oh, say. really? Yes, I'm the ah, one who right. says for yeah. absolutely no yeah. reason at all, New Zealand has declared war on Zanzibar. <laughs> <laughs> because one of his wishes was, you see, let there be no war for absolutely any reason at all. Yeah. <laughs> and the wicked thing turns it around. So, yeah. You know, um, I but, watch movies in bed at night and I fall yeah. asleep sometimes, so I missed that bit. I, didn't, didn't, I must have been nodding off. And just, to and just seen two thirds of every movie ever made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that, so that got me, got me into the acting thing. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, especially, I mean, when you're able to work with people like Eddie Izzard and Simon oh. Bay, but both yeah. writing their lines, yeah. you know, and yes. then seeing them in the case yes. of Eddie Izzard. Vastly improve on the line. Yes, you know? oh, yes, I know. That's great. Ruth and Martin met Ed, Eddie Izzard at one of these golden Hollywood foreign press, Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood foreign press things. Mm -hmm. And Ruth, you take over and tell them. How well, they... he was. He was. He said to. Um, I walked up to him afterwards and said, "Fantastic show, you know, Gregor, great." Can I buy you a drink? And he said, yes, I'll have two pints of gin and tonic, please. <laughs> Whoa, that's so a good reply. So I went to the bar and got him a drink, two drinks, and by the time I came back, he was, was practising his German with uh, Martin. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, I'm going to do the same show I did tonight in Germany in two weeks in German. He's and I don't speak... bloody show off, is And it? I'm like... <laughs> You know, we're not, we're not known for our humor, right. yeah. so there'll be a challenge. He said, never mind, after that is France, I'll do it in French. Which and did, he I did. Yeah. Yeah. And do you also Monday, know that night. before yeah. every performance, he runs barefoot, he runs a complete marathon the morning of every performance? It's just sickening, isn't it's it? I mean, yeah. it's wrong. It's wrong. Why do we love him so much? I don't know. Well, because he's very funny. He really, oh, God, that's as simple smart. as that. That's Lovely. why we love him. Yeah, so smart. Anyway, so sorry. Yeah. We're back oh, to, yeah. we're back back to, to uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your yeah. Enthusiasm. Larry David, another very funny man. Oh, yes. I, I'll tell you, it was a funny story. I got, I got this uh, message from my agent saying, OK, there's a job for you. Or we can't give you any details, but turn up at the parking lot by Santa Monica Pier. Oh, God. So, God so, um, a bit stealth. Uh, yes. Absolutely, and there, there was, you know, there were all the, the trailers and yeah. so on and so forth. Anyway, I lined up with the uh, with the extras that were yeah. lining up, and I got to the desk, and Gavin's got, oh, you shouldn't be here. Oh, bloody hell, I'm on the wrong desk. They said, no, no, your trailer is over there. Oh, <laughs> so, well, and so somebody came and took me towards the trailer, and then they said, would you like to meet your stand-in? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, oh, I, I still didn't know what this was about. Oh, I still didn't funny. know what this was about. Then Sorry. I get in and I get dressed in, dressed in my butler costume. And then a car takes us up to um, a big house just opposite the Getty on the other side, in yeah. Bel Air, but just yeah. opposite the Getty on the other side of the 405. <laughs> and, uh, oh. and then I was informed, you are Salman Rushdie's butler. butler? Oh, my so, uh, And then so Larry, of course, is seeking advice from Salman about how to deal with the fatwa, yeah. and he regards <laughs> Salman right. as the expert on the fatwa. And what, what um, Salman, of course, says to him is that you're in for a wonderful time because you will get fatwa sex, that women will want to make love with you because you're under a sentence of death. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very funny oh, episode. Yeah. The I, uh, there, was, there was more ad-libbing that I did, which, which sadly, you know, I was asked to do some ad-libbing, which yeah. I really did explain. Uh, it, uh, Larry asked me what a, what a, a gentleman, what a butler was, and I said, well, sir, technically not a butler, I am a gentleman's gentleman. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, what does that do? <laughs> and so, so I then explained the concept of a gentleman's gentleman, yeah. and uh, a, a, a la P.G. Wood has, and, yes. uh, and it was great. It I didn't make the it. show, but oh, it was really yeah. funny. Yeah. When, they, when they do the DVD, doubtless, the That's highlight will be on the highlight. Yes. But it does allow me to put in my autobiography at some point a chapter, I was Salman Rushdie's butter. butter. Yes, oh, one day. That yeah, might absolutely. even be the title. <laughs> yes. It's not me in an airport. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, there was a book in wartime called I Was Monty's Double, so you could be. <laughs> yes. yeah, there was Salman's butter. Yes. Alan double. Selka's double. Do you know who Alan Selka is? I do not. Oh, he's English. From Yorkshire. Yeah. From yeah. Yorkshire, yes. He's a real life butler and he works for Robert Evans, the film director. Oh, I've met Robert Evans. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Yeah, Alan still works for him. Yes, That's indeed. Brilliant. Yeah. So also, let's tell our audience about your collection and your sculptures and your toys oh. and your <laughs> fabulous animated series featuring Queen Victoria. Oh, oh right. Yes. Okay. I haven't seen that for a while. Well, for many... For, okay, I had a moment of inspiration when I was visiting the Tate Gallery in London. Mm. 
Now this is the Tate Gallery long ago in the 70s, yes. uh, when, it, when the Tate model didn't exist. Yes. And they had a picture up there, which, it was a, like a montage, it was a shop window, actually had a little door and a Union Jack. <laughs> it had been constructed by the pop artist Peter Blake, oh, yes. Yes. the cover for Sergeant Pepper. Uh, and this whole yeah. window was filled up with sil daft old toys yeah. that he had found in the windows of sweet shops and news oh, agents yes. all over the north mm -hmm. in the 50s. And I, I fell in love with it. I thought, oh, it's great. Yeah. I thought, I wonder if I could make one like that. And you did, and so I started, you? Yeah. I started going to car boot sales, yeah. um, going to flea markets, uh, yeah. you know, everything. And gradually started putting things together. Um, and I've made, you know, many of them now. Oh, I know, I've seen some, some. they're brilliant. <laughs> I think you've brought something with you today. Well, the, one of the themes that I'm yeah. doing is, is the Beatles, because needless to say, I'm a Beatles fan. And I, over the years, I've, I've collected um, lots of little figurines. These little figurines I bought in a shop that came and went very quickly in an alley behind Regent Street. <laughs> It was called, I'm wonder sure it was completely I illicit, why. but it yeah. showed it. They'd made these, like these, oh, these models fabulous. of the Beatles. Can you and, see them all right? I, I well, this way a little bit. Right. There we go. Is that better? Is yes, it easier I'll, to I'll, see like that? I'll sort of, yes, because the yeah. light was reflecting on it. So yeah. there you are. There we anyway, go. Anyway, so there are the Beatles at the at the cavern era. So I thought I'd reconstruct the cavern uh, as best I could. And then above it, you can see the van, the model, a corgi model of the van that they used to travel around and signed by oh, all the fans yes. and some of the, fa some of the fans waving. And um, I, I just felt it was great to oh, yes. have, but that's the first of the series yes. because the rest of them, it's, it's one for each album. Oh, so I've really now made about six of them. It will, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I made about six of them. And um, the one that I'm working on right now is Magical Mystery Tour, mm -hmm. which is uh, yeah. great fun because yes, I've, I've, got, I've got a big snow globe of the Magical Mystery Tour, the bus going round and the oh, Corgi lovely, bus, lovely. and the Beatles dressed in, um, in their white uh, uh, dancing tuxedos. You white tuxedos. Should know. Exactly, you that's know. right, which will, will go on top of the bus. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm having a complete blast doing I that. I bet, I'd uh, love to see that one when it's finished. Here's yeah. the thing about, about making these sculptures that it's physical. It's you know, I'm, I'm cutting and I'm cutting and sawing and gluing things, and yeah. Yeah. and, uh, and it, that's a nice change from sitting. I'm and sure it writing, is. Yeah, you know? yeah. And also, it gives me an excuse. I've got my office upstairs where I write, and then um, when I just can't do it anymore, yeah. I come down and mess around with a new yes. sculpture. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> And yeah. uh, tell us a little bit more and where the folks can find you. If it's still online, isn't it? The Queen Victoria, the animation. That's a, good, that's a very good question. Yeah, oh, that, that, just to explain yes. that, yes. Edward and Henrietta, I've, again, <laughs> deep in New Zealand, <laughs> at, at a little place in, called Masterton uh, in, in the Wop Wops of New Zealand, I've found people making these little lead figures or metal oh. figures of Victorian yes. people, mm -hmm. including two little children whom I called Edward and Henrietta. And then with a friend of mine, a guy called Michael Legg, a lovely, lovely chap, photographer, uh, we began putting together little scenes and then putting the scenes together and make a little story in five minute episode, yeah. The Adventures of Edward and Henrietta. Mm. And we did about, we did a, quite a number of them. And you mm. ask a good question there, Ruth, as to where they are. I must check because I've lost track of where they are online. But I think if people go to YouTube and type in The Adventures of Edward and Henrietta, Henrietta or just the, Edward and Henrietta, yes, they I'll might come looking. up. Yeah. And I must, and then if they're not there, I must get them up again. Get and then up. we'll put, we'll yes. post the link uh, oh, in, in the comments thread because yes. I would love to watch them again. Yes. Thank you. I, I watched, watched them originally when we first got to know you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Enchanted, absolutely. <laughs> well, it was um, that wonderful. You could do anything. You know, that's I, right. I, I was bringing in all sorts of toys, whether it was Captain Nemo, Sherlock Holmes, that's appear, right. oh, you know, I know. If yes. I had a little Such figure, a I'd work him into the yeah. story. <laughs> and it was very crude in the sense that it wasn't supposed to look smooth or because no. yeah, no, I, I couldn't know. do it. But well, I think that was, that was part, part of the fun. Of the charm. I absolutely. So. Yeah. Yes. I, I remember <laughs> one scene where um, Queen Victoria gets hold of an umbrella and does a Mary Poppins. Exactly. Ah. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> well, he is friends with George Lucas. So oh, that's yes, it. yes, so I'm sure George possible. could have animated it beautifully. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Well, but, yeah. but that thing about toys, I mean, I have had the, it has, there's been crossover between screenwriting and toys, because I mean, the, the movie of mine that Steven Spielberg produced, uh, the, um, which is called Small Soldiers, was a, mind, <laughs> a boy whose Directed toy soldiers Directed come Robert. to life. <laughs> well, no, he didn't direct it, sadly. Joe, although I was very pleased with the director who did Joe Dante. Oh, right. yes. Joe Dante directed yeah. it, um, and it was about a boy whose toy soldiers come to life. Oh. Not magically. Yeah. What it is that the toy company is taken over by a large corporation which includes 
uh, uh, missile manufacture. Uh -huh. And the chips which are supposed to go in the missiles get put in the toilets, oh. which then go on the rampage and take over the town. Fabulous. And, uh, I like I still, it. I, it's very funny, there, is a, there are several websites now called, I have to say, even to my embarrassment, Small Soldiers, best film of all time. Oh, <laughs> because great. for the kids who watched it in yes. the 90s, it's like, wow, it's everything you want. Yes, it's right. everything I wanted yeah. as a little kid. Sure. So that was, and then um, I did The Borrowers, a version of The Borrowers for working title with John Goodman, oh, yes. and Hugh Laurie, and, oh. and uh, Jim Broadbent. And again, the toys, in fact, the opening sequence of that, you'll see the toys doing their thing. Fabulous. So there has been a crossover between yeah. Wonderful. writing That's, and toy making. Goodness me. I'm going to go and have a lie, little lie down. A <laughs> little banana and a little lie down. A little banana and a little lie down. Makes, yeah. you feel, makes us yeah. feel like slackers, you sitting yeah. here. Yeah. Hard, yeah. Hardly. Look at all yes. the stuff that you do. Yeah. But no, well, the main well, thing is to have fun, though, isn't yes. it? Well, really, yes, you know, we you work have hard. fun. Yeah, we work I, hard, but we enjoy what exactly. we're doing. Yeah. Exactly. And, and we're so lucky to oh, be able to yeah. do that. I know. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We can do that and pay the rent. Yeah, exactly. Well, some months. Yeah. Some months, yes. Other months are just no complaints. That's one of the good things about coming from home, you yes. know, things things definitely oh, you can only look up. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Yeah, there's only one way. But no, Hull is a great town, but it's good to, you know, it's good to come from somewhere small absolutely, and, and you know, yes. industrial and so on, and yeah. then the world opens up to you. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, my roots are still in Liverpool. Yeah. I do a radio show every Sunday night, but mm. uh, I miss it badly. Yeah. But I, I like the sunshine. Yeah, that, yes, exactly. Yes, you Not the drive-by so much or the earthquakes, <laughs> but hey, you know, you can't, There's a place to you can't have it all. Yeah. Yeah. Did, you, well, uh, did you pen a little something at the end here? In I did indeed, yes. So, so we, um, if, for we, those of you who are regular watchers, you know we usually finish our show with, with, a, little a, with a little limerick. And yes. you being British, you'll know what a, a yes. limerick is. And so, yes. so I think I, this I, one I, might, uh, yeah. might ring some bells. Okay. So I wrote this with my own fair hands last night. Our guest from today, Gavin Scott, his talents he's shown quite a lot. There's never a lull with this young man from Hull. And now we await his next plot. Ta-da! Uh, Yay! Thanks kids for watching. <laughs> Thanks kids. And two weeks um, time. tell, yes, in two weeks time. And Gavin, just let's sign off with uh, where they can find you and on yes. Facebook or your Absolutely. websites. Absolutely. Well, first of all, before I do that, I just want to say thank you, Angie. This oh, has been a pleasure. total treat. Thank oh, you, Ruth. Really, it's been you. wonderful fun. Uh, my website is very simply, it's www.gavinscott.co. Not dot com, dot co. Okay. Uh, and okay. you can find me on Facebook and on Amazon. If you type in Gavin Scott on Amazon, I'll take you to an author page with a little video about each book. Excellent. I know how I'll spend this afternoon then. Thanks, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'll keep you busy. Oh, Thank right. you. Lovely. Well, I'll go put the kettle on again. Shall yes. we go? We'll Thanks have a nice for coming. Tea. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. 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 bye.